allowing me to come and show you this process. It is a printing process. It was invented almost 50 years ago by a man by the name of Mitch Lines, who was a printer and a ceramic artist. And he had noticed when he would roll out slabs of clay, you know, there's a lot of different colors of clay. There's white clay, black clay, red clay, just all colors. And as he rolled it out, he noticed that some of the colorant from the clay would transfer to the paper that he was rolling his clay out on. So he decided he would explore the technique. So what he had done is he went to the paint store. He tried a lot of different colorants and a lot of different papers and things to see what it would do, to trans if it would transfer or not. So he discovered he went to the paint store and took his little jars, and either they gave him the pigment or he bought it, I don't know. And he played with it for years until he perfected it the way he likes it. So tonight, what I'm going to show you is the way it's done. This is a lunch tray <laughs> that I filled with plain old ceramic clay and let it get leather hard. Then I had taken my powdered clay, which is a trolley. You want the whitest powdered clay you can find. And you mix it up with water and then you put your colored pigments in it. And then you just paint what you want on your slab. So I've used all these slabs many times. So there are layers of color. You never clean off your slab of clay. You just keep on painting. Mitch's slab is six foot by six foot. It started out over 35 years ago at a quarter of an inch. It's over three inches now. <coughs> so that is a lot of layers of clay. I would love to get it and slice it real thin, you know, to see the layers of, of colors that would be in it. So he's used his, his slab for over 35 years now. Of course, I haven't been doing it that long. My, my slab is three foot by four foot. I like big. I wish I would have made it bigger, but then I'm not tall enough to, to roll in the middle of it. So, mm -hmm. But this is what I've done. We'll start out by putting a coat of some color on your slab. Whatever color you want, it doesn't make a difference. And then you build on it. You should let it get a little dry before you start building. Now I mixed all my own colors. I only brought 12 today, but with the colors I have, you can get, well, I think I have 38 jars at home mixed up, and that isn't even half the colors that you can, you know, get out of the different pigments. <clears throat> There's a lot of different ways that you can add to your slab. Since I've got it covered, I didn't have to cover it, I could have just painted little spots. I'm going to show you how we can use stencils. Stencils are great when you, when you work with this. You just put it on your slab and roll it in so you don't have any bleeding. The slab needs to be leather hard, but not real dried out, because you need it the same consistency from the top to the bottom, so you never really want your slab to dry completely out. So how do you keep it from drying? You wet it, and, and put something spray. over the top of it, and tie it up so the air doesn't get to it. Plastic bag or plastic Well, yes. And it's best to put something that's like polyester or um, what are those suits? Yeah, polyester. Yeah, the polyester. The polyester suits. What I use is the material that I print on is called Pellon. Pellon is interfacing. It's strong. When you get it wet, it doesn't tear up. Mitch used Pellon for five years until he discovered something called Remay. I don't like Remay. Remay is too thick 
For me, it has too much texture, and it's about three times more expensive, so that's really what stopped me from using it. So I use the Pellon, and I, I like the way it looks when I'm completely finished. Well, I've taken the, this uh, stencil and, and rolled it in, you know, like if you use painter's tape so you don't bleed up under, that's the same, the same reason you roll it in. because clay will sell. I don't know if any of you are clay artists or not. I'm a clay artist and I think a clay artist. I've been in SWIC since 1998. This is the second semester that I've taken off. She's still going, so. But I got a little bored, you know, and I discovered this on YouTube when my husband was watching some sort of ball. So I was watching YouTube and, and, and found this process. Your slit needs to be like yogurt. You can make it thinner or you can make it thicker. When you use the ear syringe and you suck it up in there, it needs to be thicker, thinner. So I'll just paint a little bit of this, whatever color you want it. If you don't like something, just cover it up. You know, if there's no mistakes in this. You, when you print, you'll get a mirror image. So if you use numbers like I've got here, let's see, three and four. Make sure they're backwards. You have to make sure they're backwards. I didn't on this. And it's slippery, a tablecloth. But when you pull it off, you have your your image. I very rarely ever wash anything off because that's wasting. And I like that even though I did the yellow, I had the magenta on there and it transferred to the dare on this side. You see the numbers are backwards. They're right this way, but when I print them, they're going to be backwards. So you always have to make sure that if you need to have a number or something that, you know, they'll like, I can't even talk. But anyway, you always have to do it backwards. So, so basically this is like looking at It's like a mirror image. Yeah. 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 You never can get the same, you can print off of your slab over and over and over again, as long as there's clay on it, but you'll never get the same image twice. Mm -hmm. Because you're printing with clay. You're actually picking up clay when you do this print. It doesn't have to go in the kiln. So you just keep on adding to it. I like all kinds of stuff. So some of the pigment from the time before might come through on your show. Yes, show yes. your two other two trays you got there that you see, um, This is layers and layers of different colors that has been painted on here. Now I can print this image, and then I can go over and print this image on top of it. Hmm. So it's just whatever your little heart wants you can do in this process. Can just put this one up so you can see. This is one of my prints that had layers and layers of clay. Hmm. So and I made this frame for it. It's much cheaper to make your own your process like this because it is cloth. And as those of you who are painters, you know if you whack your canvas, you can poke a hole in it or, or put a big dent. So it's it's nice to make your own out of Luan. And just some trim boards. Here I'll pass it around. If you look, you can see different layers and layers of stuff that I've printed under. And when, when it comes out, it's okay. I mean, it's, it's uh, very... Do you frame that at all? I, did make I usually put it around canvases or boards like this. I don't have any of them that are under glass. I have one. I just meant, did you put it frame around and you wouldn't have to... 
Yeah, you can put a frame around them. <coughs> you can, you can. can. And we found out that, that the um, archive, if you, you can actually put, you know, a, a, another frame in them. You know, oh, let's see, like blur around it, shadow. Yeah, but you got to get the archival. Yes. Because the stuff you put on it to finish it will leach through on the regular paper until it dries. You know. So you can get beautiful colors. Beautiful colors. You're supposed to let it dry in between layers. But I'm, I'm, I'm impatient. I, most of the time I don't let it dry in between. I forgot my book. Oh, Pardon me? Yes. Oh, here it is. This is chalk. Plain old chalk. Chalk is made out of clay with paint, colored pigments in it. Yeah. I didn't know that until this process. You can use children's chalk. I made my own chalk out of my containers there when it got so low I just balled it up and used it. You just shred it on there. So I'm probably getting ahead of you, but when you were talking about uh, you don't know, put it under glass, do you uh, put uh, something like a fix it to? Yes. When it's completely dry, it gets real powdery because it's clay and it will yeah. clay after the water's out. It gets powdery. So you put Thompson's water sealer on it. How he discovered no. that, uh, that's just a mystery. Well, it's like a clear body uh, shirts. Mm -hmm. Then after it's done, I put the uh, glossy medium on it. The varnish, the glossy medium. It depends the look I want, how many coats I put on it. I may put one, I may put three or four. It just depends on what I want. See, now I put the chalk on there. <coughs> and I've got this some mm -hmm. stuff. <coughs> it's a lot of fun. <laughs> so, you can just keep on going and keep on going. This is some black. I hope it comes out of here. <coughs> She's had first year students that knew nothing about playing with students. Oh, and it's so easy. It on there. Oh, wow. <laughs> you know, you can keep on going and going and going and going as much as you want. Depends on what you want. I, I also like to take. I'm, I'm messy. I really am, so watch out. <laughs> <laughs> I said, oh, gotcha. Here. <laughs> you were I don't care about it. Here you go. Thank you. Go. You get to take all the demonstration. Yeah. <laughs> it comes right off if you get it right away. That's what I get for so you. Got to get it for it. Don't just become part of the design. Pardon me? <laughs> <laughs> so you can just keep adding and adding and adding. I decide that I don't like this section right here. I get a color and go, well, I don't like that, so I'm painting over that. It should be dry. It should be dry. But of course it isn't. Thank you. So the idea is to put that all on there and then rub things over and make things off of it? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So you just keep on adding and adding and adding and adding. But you don't have to have the stencils on. No, you can you just put it on there too. Yeah. Just, yeah. Also, you can take and paint it on paper. You can put it on there. And I can take this, go like this. So 
it transfers. Take this one, put it there, and go with my fingers. And it transfers. So it's just endless what you can do with this process. That's one of our demonstrator uh, uh, was uh, convincing us to limit our palettes. Limit your palettes. Yeah, no, like three colors, maybe. Because you can mix all kinds of colors with just uh, the basic oh. ones. So, and he said that uh, by using primary, especially on primary and uh, secondary, you won't get mud because you know how true. This watercolor has got a lot of mud. So what you did is just mixing colors like he was talking about. Yeah, I just mix colors and mix colors and do more and more and more. I love bright colors. And one cool thing about this is when it's dry and you put Thompson's water sealer on it, the colors just pop. They come back to the way they looked when they were wet. So that they dry out so bad because it is. Uh, yeah. I'll show you. Actually, the more colors we found that you put on it, it gives it all together different each time. I brought this one. It's my grandson. He's six. And he loves to do art. So he, de he designed this one himself. Wow, cool. So, it's so cool. Yeah. It's so, so you just keep painting. Yeah. Yeah. Take the start. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Put the paper in. Yeah. 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 Now this is mine. I thought that might be. Donuts. So. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I even take stencils after they're finished or freehand and take acrylic mm, and nice. and draw on the the print that I printed. Over at the gallery, I've got a lot of my small pieces for when I frame or wrap it around the boards and stuff. You know, you always have extra. I don't throw that away. I save it, and then I put little silhouettes with acrylic paint on it, and then frame them in five by sevens if I have enough. So the kids like those. This is one I just I have a great big one, the three by four. And you don't have to print the whole piece, your whole slab. This is part of my slab, and this is part of my slab. And my slab is three foot by four foot, so you see how much that I left off of this. But I do have one that's, that's the whole three by four slab. Let me show you how to print this. There's a lot of tools involved with this. Your water bottle and your roller. And then the stuff that you print with. I'll show you how to print on this one first. You always have to squirt it with water because it has dried out. And then you squirt your tail on. You lay it down and roll it. There's a very important part of this process, never take it completely off. Because if you pull this completely off, you're going to lose your registration and you'll never get it down again unless you want a double image. And I have some that are really cool that I double printed. So that you always have to leave it down or, it, or you'll just have a, a print that's not in focus. Well, I didn't see one. There's a piece of roller. Oh, is it? 
and the chef it looks like. I've got a pampered chef one at the house, but I can't find where I hid it from this one. You'll see it's starting to pull it up. You can get down to the bottom clay. But there's a lot of layers on that's under this one. What's the most you've ever gotten off of one before you ran out of clay? I don't think I've stopped at three or four. Three or four. I, think four. I think four is as many as I've ever rolled off of one. Because I get bored. <laughs> I do. <laughs> I get bored, so. Well, it depends on how thick you may put the clay on you. It depends on how thick it is. Yeah. My, mine at home, I could probably print oh, lots and lots of them because there's so many layers of clay on there, colored clay. underneath the yellow so it was pulling the design that had already been printed on from underneath there so you can do two slabs and then uh, rub print, print one and then something else from the print over the Take your paper and put it, put it on the other oh, yeah. side. We'll do that. Let's, I don't know let's the way you got it, but that's great. Let's do this one and this one. I'm sorry, I slopped it on you. Oh, no, no. It stopped right here and then it jumped on you. No Better, but it's a long way from the left. 
it's known. It's, uh, it's in the pencil form. Why do you use the small one? Is that large one? Yeah. What's the difference in using the small one? This one's bowed a little bit, yeah. uh, and this one's flatter. So it pushes hard. It pushes a little bit different. What a lot of Mitchell students do is they buy the, uh, you know, the tape for when you do wall board? They take it and make a border around it so you can get nice crisp. I don't like to do that because I like to print the entire piece. Because if, if, if I would put that tape on here, right here may be the best piece, the best part of the entire print. Yeah. And if I cover it up, you know, so I don't cover up anything. I just print all the way to the edge. So, and then I take and lay the piece on the floor and block it off with frames or paper or whatever and find the section that I think looks the best out of the whole print. I am collecting also my little pieces. I'm going to make a a quilt, I wouldn't call it a quilt, but I've got little three inch squares and I'm cutting, I have a great big frame that is going to go on <coughs> pieces, like a, like a mosaic. Outside. Yeah, it's, you can't it's do bad. that. See, you just print, print, print. So. It, uh, it's very sticky. You need to spray it. Yeah. I have to spray it. Probably with the spray. You can buy spray drops. If it's windy outside, it just goes crazy. So if you sell a piece like this, when you brush over it, would that smear the clay? Pardon me? When you brush Thompson's over the strip. It really right? doesn't, if it's dry, it doesn't do bad. It, really, it may yeah, do a little it's smearing, it's but most of the time it doesn't do really that good. So, $88. Really? For that size. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That one isn't finished yet. i got to put the frame around it, the board around it. The piece was too the piece was too small to completely wrap around to the back. So but and I'm not a very good cutter either. I can use board straight. My husband bought me a table saw for Christmas, but I haven't used it yet. So all kinds of stuff in my just at night. So I'll say. I've got diamonds in the drawer at home. <laughs> right. I find it very interesting too. I took color theory for a while until my mother got sick and I had to quit. But I, I can't tell what colors. Like I can't say that this green and this yellow is going to make this color or I can't do that. It, I, my brain doesn't work that way, but this is fun to mix my colors where I can just keep adding whatever I want to make whatever color I want. It needs to be rolled flat too. 
If it isn't rolled flat, it won't crack on you. You'll get a white, white mark because you're not pulling up any clay. There you go. You got that one. You got one on that one right there. I just didn't roll it. So, are there any questions? It's a lot of fun. It really is a lot of fun. So if you keep it moist, and mm -hmm. then if you come back and roll it over, you'll still get everything that was on there before. So you roll yes. it down. I can come back later and print this again, or I can add more stuff to it. If you look at this, let me show you. If you look at this, where I have scratched down in there with a scratcher, and then I rolled it flat, that was on another print that I had done. I rolled it flat and then added more color over the top of it. Okay, Mike was mentioning scratching. Mm -hmm. Yeah. ceramic tools Sorry. to scratch to scratch it. And that's what I did with this. I made the circles just went around and then like that and then I rolled it flat so I could print it because it wouldn't it would have made white marks where I had went in with this because there had been no clay to pick up. So you were mentioning you could take and, and draw an image with it. Yes, you can. Say a lion or something. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then roll it out, you pull it up, and you're going to have all that mm -hmm. color, and you're going to have the, the lion mm -hmm. in it, or whatever you wish to do. I don't know. Oh. You, know, you can use a, your syringe and suck it up and squirt it on there. I, on a lot of my, I have circles on a lot of my work, and I have a lot of these circle makers. So I just put clay on it. And just stick it on there. Or a big bowl, or the bigger the circle, the bigger the things I have to find. You ever done like that? You can see all the metal cookie you can do. Yes, yes. All kinds of stuff. All kinds of stuff. Yeah, With the, the stencils. That's, yeah, for me. Somebody had to draw this. The stencils make it make it nice for when you're when you're printing too that you could just get different designs in there. You can use just just about anything. Um, it leaves the indention. Now when it gets dry enough, I'll put paper over it and I'll flatten this. You'll still see the lines. It makes it look like it has more texture in it. So. But if you didn't flatten it, even though there's clay behind here, it would still make a white one. It depends on how deep this groove is, because when you're ro when you're rolling it with your with your pellet on top of it, you are flattening. So it so it, it would press it down. But you'll still see the lines, the texture lines. Well, I was wondering if it would come yeah. together. So those, uh, no, those squares are pretty good. No, you don't know. Well, they can run together, though. I mean, as wet as it is right now, yeah, you put a towel on there. No, they'll be fine. Would it not match? You'll still see the lines. You know what I mean? No. It felt like spreading ice. Like this one no, that I've printed already. I didn't bring I, I, enough pieces I, I, I of towel. I'd like to see that, to be honest. Todd, you say when it's wet like that, he wants to know if it's going to... Will it smear? Smear. Yeah, will it smear together like ice? When you put the powder on it. I'll show you what it is. It's still wet. See, it's, see what it does when it's still wet? 
kind of unique. Some places. Mm -hmm. yes. Over here. Depends on how wet it is. Okay. That's where you're supposed oh, to be. Yeah. Yeah. But yet it picked up a lot of clay so from underneath. Yeah. You know, what Let's see. Yeah. See what it did. I'm it's actually kind of I've seen that. Yeah. Is your paper wow. expensive? No, it's under. I, I buy it in the 50 yard rolls, and it's under $150, and it's real wide. Oh, okay. okay. That's not what the rule looks like. But you can go to Michael's or Joanne's Fabric or any place like that and buy pillow on. It's just interfacing. It, it comes in a variety of thicknesses mm -hmm. to a real thick, thick piece that's more like a yeah, I don't like the real stuff. So stuff. it's, you know, you can get all the like kinds this. of textures. Yeah. And she's got to roll yeah. off. Depends on how wet it is. Now let's roll this whole piece on there and see what it does. <laughs> That we can. Oh, oh my gosh. You can make your own chalks. And it be. Sometimes it breaks. It breaks off and take chunks. Yeah. And that's that's really cool too. So it's that's why I don't clean my brushes. I just keep them all dirty. That way I can. <laughs> <laughs> See so the different colors. Let's see, and then you just get it, I guess. I like the way. Well, your size brush says right color on I don't care what color she's like. Unless you get it. Just do the chalk around something. Mm -hmm. Yes, it looks really good with the circle, all different colors inside the thing. Circles and squares. So you can just your little mind can go crazy. <laughs> so, is there any more questions? Um, we just reiterate that you start with a tray. Well, I put this in a tray because it's made of plastic. You got you. And the clay won't dry out as bad. Okay, but what are you? Are you initially filling it up with something? Clay. Like just stone, clay? no stoneware clay. Stoneware clay. Mm -hmm. like so that you fire off. You can fire this clay, but, but you if you fire this, this if, if I take this out of this tray and put it in the kiln, mm -hmm. all this color will burn off mm -hmm. because it's pure pigment from the paint store. Now, if I use regular oxides or um, Potter's pigments, then you can fire that. Oxides and stuff, you can fire that. But this will fire right off. So it's just regular painter's pigment. Okay, so you fill it up and then you do, you do let it dry. You, let, that you dry? let it get leather hard. Come feel this. Here. Oh, I can, I can believe you. You can feel it. It's, okay. See, it still has. Just think if you would have. Uh, push on it. See, it's, it's not hard as a 
wrong. Well, there's there's still moisture in this closet. I haven't come up to get some of it. There's still moisture in this closet. Yeah. 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 Yeah, you should see me draw. So the pattern, the, 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 the pattern that you would want to. There you go. You know, when we did cast spells, I want to see the pattern would come on. Well, really, what you should do is you, you should spritz it a little bit. Oh, yeah. Like yeah. That. Yeah. Oh. And then it's and then it's sort of rolling, and then here. roll it down. Tell them why you use polyester. Oh, Johnny, Vicky, be so happy. Now, the reason that this that this polyester picks this up and the remake that Mitch loses picks up is because there's an electronic charge. You know, like from Swiffers, there's some electronic, elect, elect, I can't even say, like, static, static electric, electric that's in this, yeah. and it pulls the clay up. Mm. So. There's a lot of stuff you can't use. It won't. It won't. Yeah, it doesn't it won't pick it up. So he he did use um, rice paper, which I think I'm going to get some, so I can tear along the edges and mount it under glass. But, it, but you would have to put the Thompsons on it to put it under glass. Yes, you always put the Thompsons water sealer on it because that it seals it. To whatever you're printing it on. You mean you mean you do that would have Thompson's on it. It has Thompson's has water that. sealer on it, and then on top of that, I put a glossy, the glossy medium, the varnish. Uh, put it on. What do you use for varnish? It's Martin. the glossy medium, the painter the oh, that you print. So it's okay. it's just what they put on acrylic paints and stuff. So. Okay. Well, I was I was talking about when you when you put them away with a polyester. Why you have to put polyester yes. on it? Thank you. If oh. to, I put I have these on it because Eileen gave me some polyester, but I lost it. I see a car, I can't find it or somewhere. And you can put paper towels on this. You can put a towel on this, but mostly everything's made of cotton. You know, if you keep cotton in water very long, it's going to start deteriorating. Mm -hmm. Clay already has a smell to it. But if you put that towel on there and have it nice and wet and you wrap it up real tight and you come back in a couple weeks, you're going to want to throw it out the door without opening it. <laughs> because it's going to stink. So you should put polyester. If you have a piece of polyester, or I wet this a lot of times and just put it on top of it and you tie it up real tight. You can't use just for a saran wrap? You can if you want <laughs> Which I did. I had saran wrap on them. But you need to make it tight so the air can't get to it. Because if air gets to clay, it dries it out. So. It's cool stuff. It's fun. It, it's a lot of fun. It's messy, but I don't mind messy. Yeah, come over to Seward Art Gallery. I don't know where that's at. It's on Russell and Twelve. Over in Seward. We have a real nice gallery over there. Russell and Twelve. Hmm? Russell and Twelve. Russell and Twelve. It's right across the street from McGurk's. The last time I was at Russell and Twelve, there was not anything like what's there. They've really done a lot over there. There's a lot of nice places to eat and. So, but yeah, if you get a chance, we're open um, Thursday and Friday from 6 to 9, and then Saturday and Sunday from 11 to 6. We have an opening every second Friday of the month. Right now, we have Steampunk Off, and it's a really good show. So, and what are the hours you know? Sorry. Thursday and Friday is 6 to 9, and then Saturday and Sunday, 11 to 6. Oh, so not there. No, we're not open during the week. So a lot of us are over there messing, but but we're we are not open. Okay. But it's a real good show that's up right now, Steampunk. We have fewer pieces <laughs> that's up right now because Saturday we sold five when I was over there of the steampunk pieces right off the floor. Mm. Usually a lot of times people will leave them there, but these people wanted to take the pieces home with them then. <laughs> We had some empty holes there to fill. I don't know if the artists have brought any more back or not, but.
steampunk is has a lot of gears and metal and chains and stuff like that. A lot of lamps made out of pipes and. Right. Have you guys seen some of Judy's pieces that she's done recently yeah, that are um, that are this for the steampunk shows coming out? It's it's to me it's kind of like uh, Victorian. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Victorian stuff. Victorian uh, sci-fi. There we go. <laughs> they have, yeah. They, have, they had one piece over there. It was like a weird <clears throat> piece, and it's it's a skull, mm. and it's painted gold. And its mouth is dropped open, and it looks like it's smiling. And it's got goggles on it. And they put balls or something under for eyes, and a lamp coming out of his head. I mean, when you look, it just makes you smile when you see it. So that thing sold right away. The night it was gone. It's still sitting there, but it. Pat, if there's one thing you really want to drive home about clay monoprinting, what would be that one thing for? A beginner to or really beginner. keep in mind the whole time that they're doing it. You don't need any talent. <laughs> <laughs> it helps everybody. Really so, yeah, you don't need any talent, and it's something that you can just lose yourself in for hours uh, if you have patience enough to let it dry in between. In between well, layers. your kids use a hair dryer yeah. too. But you really don't want to use a hair dryer because it dries it, it out. It dries out the clay. It too. dries it out too fast. That's why you need at least three or four or five yeah. different slabs mm -hmm. you're yeah. going. Well, I like my big slab. Yeah. That way I can start wherever mm -hmm. I want to do the whole thing. I had a student a while back that was there. And she had four of them going at one time on my slab. Because you know it's three foot by four foot. Right. So she did made it in sections. And Okay, I got an idea. For uh, those who are not into abstract, you could probably do a, a, a somewhat realistic painting using mm -hmm. that. So. You can, if you want to. Yeah. You can. Now, the other, one of our girlfriends that go to school with us, uh, I, I took this to Swick and showed the students there and they played with it. And she, her work is completely different than mine. Hers is. I'm she, completely abstract. She isn't. She puts flowers yeah. on them um, and boats and anything you can imagine. She paints on them, you know, with the brushes. Does she use smaller brushes? Well, you can. You can. <laughs> yeah. So you can actually, you know, paint yourself. Um, but see, you're going to have talent then. And I don't have any. You do too. Oh, would anyone here disagree with that statement? <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> well, thank you, Pat, very much for a wonderful demo. Big round of applause for Pat. Ten yes. <laughs> Focused in North St. Louis County, Northside Art Association is a nonprofit 501c3 arts organization that serves local artists through community exposure networking, education, and peer interaction. Learn more about Northside Art Association at www.northsideartassociation.org.